Hi, my name is Fallon, and I'm going to be doing a coordinated speech about stomach cancer. Um, I'm going to touch on three main points about this type of cancer today, which would be the cause of it, treatment options for it, and recovery and the outcome of remission of this cancer. Um, I also wanted to start by saying that this subject is near and dear to my heart. I lost my dad to this type of cancer five years ago, and it is the rarest cancer here in America, but it is also the third leading causes of cancer deaths worldwide. On average, about 27,510 people will be diagnosed with stomach cancer just this year alone, and about 11,140 of them will die. Stomach cancer consumes a lot of a person's life, and finding out you have it, um, can be very hard for you and your family going through treatment um, and what finding out what stages you're in can be very hard. Um, like I said, I became very interested in this subject when I was a senior in high school my dad got diagnosed with it. Um, he was already in stage three when we found out and I started to research more about it um, when I found out that he was in stage three. I wanted to know how he would recover, his treatment options, um, how many people develop this type of cancer, how you develop this type of cancer, and I started um, googling, calling doctors, talking to my dad's oncologist, going every to every doctor's appointment there was to go to with him, and I was always by his side. Um, I could say a lot, but today I just want to educate you guys on the three top, the three main points, like I said before, the causes, um, the age that you develop this treatment option and treatment options, and the outcome of the recovery. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have stomach cancer. Have you ever heard of that? Before? Have you ever heard that before? Stomach stomach cancer is caused by many different things. Um, the causes can be a family history of stomach cancer. Um, generally, it begins when there is a cell um, DNA mutation and um, error. Uh, but people with GERD are also most common to get this type of cancer. Yes, people without GERD can get this type of cancer as well. Um, obesity and smoking are, are big tributes to this type of cancer. A high diet of salty and smoked foods is a very big one. Not eating enough vegetables or fruits. Um, if you have an H. pylori infection, which is a bacteria in your stomach that we all have a certain amount of already, but if we get more than needed in dangerous levels, it could be very, very deadly to us. Um, Long-term stomach inflammation is another thing. And um, stomach polyps. Also, drinking a lot of alcohol can also cause this type of cancer. Now, there are ways to prevent this type of cancer, as in changing your diet, your everyday living habits, and trying just to live as healthy as possible. Here are treatments that we can discuss, but there are no guarantees. So, treatment options depend on the stage of your cancer that you're in. Um, there are stages one through four. Four, obviously, as you guys know from other types of cancer, is there's no coming back and you only have a certain amount of time to live. Um, stage three is iffy. It can get to the point where we can do surgery. They can do surgery and take the cancer out, or it's just they'll open you up and it has metastasized and they can't do anything about it. Um, some treatment options are surgery, from um, removing early stage tumors from the lining of the stomach if the cancer is found early, as well as removing the portion of the stomach that the tumor is lay lying on, or removing the whole stomach and rerouting your, your system. Um, after that comes radiation therapy and chemotherapy. You could also do targeted drugs which are certain drugs that target exactly where the cancer cells are and kill them. Some patients try to do clinical trials. There's no guarantee that these will work. 
it, it's a guarantee. It, it is no guarantee they will make you sicker. It is no guarantee that they will recover and put you in recovery or anything like that. Um, chemotherapy and radiation are two of the biggest first treatment options they suggest, and then um, they will go to surgery and see what they can do from there. I'm sorry, but there is nothing more we can do for you. Have you ever heard such a heart-wrenching statement? Getting told that a loved one has so, just so much time to live really can affect your life. Um, when I got told that my dad had three to six months to live, I didn't know how to react. I just started bawling my eyes out, and I didn't know how to look at life after that. But lastly, I'll be talking about the recovery of this type of cancer. This year alone, it is estimated that, um, like I said before, 11,140 people will die from this cancer. That is mostly men than women because this cancer is more common in men than women. Um, a five-year survival rate is 31% based on the stages that um, a patient is diagnosed in. Most people who are diagnosed are already in stage four because this cancer takes so long to detect that there is no coming back. Your cancer has metastasized and there's nothing that they can do for you. Um, and that is a, once you're diagnosed in stage four, that is a 5% survival rate. If the cancer is caught and treated before it gets spread, which is very rare, it is still only a 68% survival rate. Um, a lot of other cancers, when you look at them, have a higher survival rate than this type of cancer. Um, like I said, it's the rarest cancer in America, and um, it is most common in Japan, where they eat a lot of pickled and smoked and salty foods. 60% um, of the people who are diagnosed with this cancer are age 64. The average age of being diagnosed is 68. 71% of your cases of stomach cancer are in less developed countries, so third world countries. Um, it could be devastating for families to hear that a loved one is in stage four. Um, like I said before, I didn't know how to react. My mom didn't know how to react. And we got told my dad had three to six months to live. And exactly four months and four days after we got told that my dad was, my dad passed. Um, once we found out his cancer metastasized, it was a very quick moving process. Uh, it went from us thinking, all right, cool, we're going to make it through this. He's going to live to he's in hospice and he can take his last breath any minute. Um, after this pass happens, a lot of family members question why. Why don't we know a lot about this cancer? How come my loved one got this cancer? Especially when they live a healthy lifestyle. Um, it's just very devastating and I wish we knew more about the cancer. But sadly we don't. I've noticed as the year has gone on and I've done more research about the cancer. There's more facts I've found and they're trying to hopefully develop a pinpoint reason of why this cancer is becoming, uh, I guess you could say, on the rise, even though it's so rare, it's still on the rise here in America. Um, so that's it. And after listening to this speech, I hope you think about ways to prevent this from happening to you or a loved one, and you live every day like it's your last, and you don't take it for granted and you live a happy, healthy life.